Hello, everyone. Welcome to Storytime with Sue. Thank you for joining us today. Our topic today is flowers. We're going to talk all about um, how flowers grow and learn about different types of flowers and read some stories. So thank you for being with us today. Let's get started. The first book I'm going to read to you, I'm not going to read the whole book. I'm going to read to you a section about how flowers grow. This book is called The Life Cycle of a Flower, a Bobby Cowman book. So I marked a few pages in here that I wanted to show you. Fantastic flowers. See all the different types of flowers? Listen to this. There are more than 275,000 different species or types of flowering plants on earth. Their flowers come in different shapes, sizes, and colors. Some flowers are tiny, whereas others grow to be more than 12 inches across. These pages show flowers of different colors, shapes, and sizes. So many different kinds of flowers. The next thing I want to tell you about from this book is how flowers grow from seeds. Some flowers grow from seeds, so let's read about that. The seeds of flowering plants can be many sizes, colors, and shapes. Some flowers contain many seeds, others contain only a few seeds. Inside a seed, each seed contains an embryo or a tiny unformed flower. A seed also holds food for the embryo. The embryo is protected by a hard outer covering called a seed coat. The embryo begins growing when it starts to take in water through its seed coat. Germination can take 7 to 120 days. Most seeds, including the sunflower seed below, germinate in 15 to 30 days. So if you look at the pictures, you can see how it starts. There's the seed with its seed coat. The tiny embryo absorbs water and swells until it cracks and pushes through its seed coat. The next picture shows the roots coming out. The young roots grow downward into the soil to find water and to support the young seedling as it grows. As the roots continue growing, the seedling pushes its way up through the soil. And then on this page, Right here, the seed leaves are small at this stage. The seed coat falls away from the seedling. Here's the seed leaves. There goes the seed coat. And then finally, the stem of the young sunflower grows stronger and taller. The roots continue to grow underground. So it grows down and it grows up. Seeds may not start growing right away. They need a certain amount of space, sunlight, and water. Many seeds remain dormant or inactive until conditions are right for them to begin growing. Seeds are often dormant through winter and begin growing in spring. Some seeds can stay dormant for years. That's pretty amazing. Outside, you might see some of these. These are daffodils. And they grow from bulbs instead of seeds. So let's learn about other ways flowers can grow. Most flowering plants grow from seeds, but flowers also have other ways of reproducing. A few plants produce bulbs that store food and grow into new plants. A bulb is made up of short, swollen leaves packed around a fat stem. Others produce new plants called runners from their stems. Seedlings that grow from bulbs and runners start their lives joined to their parent plants. They get the nutrients they need to survive and grow from the parent plants. So here's an example of how a daffodil grows from a bulb. Tulips and certain species of daffodils grow from bulbs. When the weather is warm, bulbs grow stems. Eventually, flowers grow on the ends of the stems. 
New bulbs grow on the sides of their parent bulbs. The bulbs grow during spring and summer, but do not grow at all during the winter. And here's another way that flowers can grow. Runners and rhizomes. Some flowering plants reproduce by spreading out. Flowering plants that make runners send out small then become separate plants. Another way flowering plants spread out is by forming rhizomes. A rhizome is a type of stem that grows just beneath the surface of the ground beside the parent plant. So here's an example of runners from a strawberry plant. And here's an example of a rhizome from an iris plant. So there's some facts to know about flowers. First, I wanna show you some flowers from my yard that grow from bulbs. So you'll see here, all different kinds of beautiful flowers and they just started blooming. So if you go out for a walk, you might find some of these too. I really like these little tiny daffodils. Might see some baby ones or some big ones. There are many, many, many different kinds of daffodils. And I want to show you something else interesting that has to do a little bit with flowers. These are flower cutting scissors and they're made primarily for roses, for cutting roses, but I use them for the plants, the flowers that I just showed you. The interesting about these scissors, if you can see it, they have an extra little piece right here so that when you cut your flower stem, you don't crush it like you would with regular scissors. This makes a nice clean narrow cut so that the little tube that is the stem can stay open and keep absorbing water and not get crushed or damaged by regular scissors. And those are pretty neat. Now we're gonna read a neat book called An ABC of Flowers by Yuda Hilpich. And this is gonna tell you all about different kinds of flowers. Okay, and it also helps you learn your alphabet. A is for Aster, and Emily, that's me. B is for Billy Ball. C, Carnation. D is for Daisy. E is for Evening Primrose. F is for forget-me-not, G for Gerbera, H for hibiscus, and I for iris. J is for Jacob's Ladder, and K is for Calancho. L is for lace leaf. M for mum. N is for narcissus. O is for orchid. P is for peony. And Q is for Queen Anne's lace. R is for rose. S is for sunflower. T is for tulip. And U is for ulex. V is for violet. W is for wax flower. And then they added a few over here for X, Y, and Z. Xeranthemum, yarrow, and zinnia. It's a beautiful book, isn't it? So many different types of flowers in the world. Great job practicing your flower ABCs, my friends. See you again soon.
was a nice book. We learned a lot about a lot of different kinds of flowers. Speaking of flowers, rose and some kind of crazy daisy. The neat thing about these are their stems are bendable. You can put them in different shapes, wrap them around things, wear it as a bracelet, whatever you want. These are our friends who are joining us today for story time. Now, I have a few jokes for you today about flowers. What kind of flower grows on your face? I'll give you a hint. What kind of flower grows on your face? Did you know that you can grow a flower on your face? The answer is tulips, tulips. Here's another funny joke for you. Why couldn't the flower ride its bike? Wanted to ride its bike. Maybe you've been riding your bike outside. Um, but he couldn't ride his bike. Why couldn't he ride his bike? If you have some ideas, feel free to type them in the chat box. Why couldn't the flower ride his bike? The answer is because it lost its pedals. All right, our next story today is by Eve Bunting, and it's called Flower Garden. And the illustrations are by Katherine Hewitt. So let's get started. Well, I think we might go shopping for some flowers. Garden in a shopping cart. Doesn't it look great? Garden on the checkout stand. I can hardly wait. Garden in a cardboard box. Walking to the bus. Garden sitting on our laps. People smile at us. Garden going up the stairs, stopping at each floor. This garden's getting heavier. At last, our own front door. Put purple pansies at each end. Daisies white as snow, daffodils, geraniums, and tulips in a row. Ooh, that looks beautiful. Garden in a window box high above the street. Where butterflies can stop and rest and ladybugs can meet. Walkers walking down below will lift their heads and see purple, yellow, red, and white, a color jamboree. Candles on a birthday cake, chocolate ice cream too. Happy, happy birthday, mom, a garden box for you. Aww. The end, isn't that nice? They made a garden box for mom for her birthday. She has flowers inside her shoes.
So you might be wondering why we picked flowers for today's topic. I mean, obviously there's a lot of flowers that are starting to bloom right now, but also I picked it because today is May 1st, which is May Day. And around the world, May Day is often a day to celebrate the coming of spring. And in some places, it's a tradition to pack a little basket of flowers and candy to give to someone else on May Day. So that's why I picked flowers for today. So happy May Day to you. I have a couple more jokes for you. What is a frog's favorite flower? What kind of flowers do frogs like the best? Let's see if our flowers know the answer. What is a frog's favorite flower? Do you know? No? Then I'll tell you. Crocus. A crocus is a type of bulb that grows first thing in the spring. You probably saw them out here around Newton a few weeks ago. And a frog likes to croak. So that's why the answer is crocus. Next joke. What do you call flowers who are friends? Hmm. There's some flowers and they're friends. What do they call each other? What would we call them? Buds. And my last joke for today is, what do you call a grandpa flower? What's a good name for a grandpa flower? Let's see. Um, pap Pap? No. Grandpa? No. Pappy? It's a long story. It's a classic. It's called Miss Rumpheus. Story and Pictures by Barbara Cooney. I picked this book because it has something to do with flowers. You can sort of tell from the cover. These are called lupines. Look at her cute little cat. So let's read this story together. Ooh, these are really pretty flowers. is a wide book. I hope you can see it. The lupine lady lives in a small house overlooking the sea. In between the rocks around her house grow blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. The lupine lady is little and old, but she has not always been that way. I know. She is my great aunt and she told me so. Once upon a time, she was a little girl named Alice who lived in a city by the sea. From the front stoop, she could see the wharves and the bristling masts of tall ships. Many years ago, her grandfather had come to America on a large sailing ship. Now he worked in the shop at the bottom of the house, making figureheads for the prows of ships and carving Indians out of wood to put in front of cigar stores. For Alice's grandfather was an artist. He painted pictures too of sailing ships and places across the sea. When he was very busy, Alice helped him put in the skies. In the evening, Alice sat on her grandfather's knee and listened to his stories of faraway places. When he had finished, Alice would say, when I grow up, I too will go to faraway places. And when I grow old, I do. What is that? asked Alice. You must do something to make the world more beautiful, said her grandfather. All right, said Alice, but she did not know what that could be. In the meantime, Alice got up and washed her face and ate porridge for breakfast. She went to school and came home and did her homework. And pretty soon, she was a grown-up. Then my great-aunt Alice set out to do the three things she had told her grandfather she was going to do. 
She left home and went to live in another city far from the sea and the salt air. There she worked in a library, dusting books and keeping them from getting mixed up and helping people find the ones they wanted. Some of the books told her about faraway places. People call her Miss Rumphius now. Sometimes she went to the conservatory in the middle of the park. When she stepped inside on a wintry day, the warm, moist air wrapped itself around her and the sweet smell of jasmine filled her nose. This is almost like a tropical isle, said Miss Rumphius, but not quite. So Miss Rumphius went to a real tropical island where people kept cockatoos and monkeys as pets. She walked on long beaches, picking up beautiful shells. One day she met the Bapa Raha, king of a fishing island village. You must be tired, he said, come into my house and rest. So Miss Rumphius went in and met the Bapa Raha's wife. The Bapa Raha himself fetched a green coconut and cut a slice off the top so that Miss Rumphius could drink the coconut water inside. Before she left, the Bapa Raha gave her a beautiful mother of pearl shell on which he had painted a bird of paradise and the words, you will always remain in my heart. You will always remain in mine too, said Miss Rumphius. My great aunt, Miss Alice Rumphius, climbed tall mountains where snow never melted. She went through jungles and across deserts. She saw lions playing and kangaroos jumping. And everywhere she made friends she would never forget. Finally, she came to the land of the lotus eaters. And there, getting off a camel, she hurt her back. What a foolish thing to do, said Miss Rumphius. Well, I have certainly seen faraway places. Maybe it is time to find my place by the sea. And it was, and she did. From the porch of her new house, Miss Rumphius watched the sun come up. She watched it cross the heavens and sparkle on the water, and she saw it set in glory in the evening. She started a little garden among the rocks that surrounded her house and she planted a few flower seeds in the stony ground. Miss Rumphius was almost perfectly happy. But there is still one more thing I have to do, she said. I have to do something to make the world more beautiful. But what? The world already is pretty nice, she thought, looking out over the ocean. The next spring, Miss Rumphius was not very well. Her back was bothering her again, and she had to stay in bed most of the time. The flowers she had planted the summer before had come up and bloomed in spite of the stony ground. She could see them from her bedroom window, blue and purple and rose-colored. Lupines, said Miss Rumphius with satisfaction. I have always loved lupines the best. I wish I could plant more seeds this summer so that I could have still more flowers next year but she was not able to. After a hill where she had not been in a long time. I don't believe my eyes, she cried when she got to the top. For there on the other side of the hill was a large patch of blue and purple and rose colored lupines. It was the wind, she said as she knelt into light. It was the wind that brought the seeds from my garden here and the birds must have helped. Then Miss Rumphius had a wonderful idea. Ooh. She hurried home and got out her seed catalogs. She sent off to the very best seed house for five bushels of lupine seed. All that summer, Miss Rumphius, her pockets full of seeds, wandered over fields and headlands sowing lupines. She scattered seeds along the highways and down the country lanes. She flung handfuls of them around the schoolhouse and back of the church. She tossed them into hollows and along stone walls. Her back didn't hurt her anymore at all. Now some people called her that crazy old lady. 
The next spring, there were lupines everywhere. Fields and hillsides were covered with blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. They bloomed along the highways and down the lanes. Bright patches lay around the schoolhouse and back of the church. Down in the hollows and along the stone walls grew the beautiful flowers. Miss Rumpheus had done the third, the most difficult thing of all. My great aunt Alice, Miss Rumpheus, is very old now. Her hair is very white. Every year there are more and more lupines. Now they call her the lupine lady. Sometimes my friends stand with me outside her gate, curious to see the old, old lady who planted the fields of lupines. When she invites us in, they come slowly. They think she is the oldest woman in the world. Often she tells us stories of faraway places. When I grow up, I tell her I too will go to faraway places and come home to live by the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, says my aunt. But there is a third thing you must do. What is that, I ask? You must do something to make the world more beautiful. All right, I say. but I do not know yet what that can be. The end. That's a beautiful story. So maybe today and for the next week, while you go about your days, you can think about what you could be doing to make the world a little bit more beautiful. Maybe you draw a picture and hang it on your refrigerator. Maybe you hang it in your window for everyone outside to see. Maybe you bring in some flowers to put on your table to look at during dinner time. Maybe there's another idea that you have. Whatever it is, I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll be back here again next Friday. I'm planning to read and talk about bees and honey. And that ties in with our flower conversation today. Um, again, just a reminder for you and your parents, on Monday, we'll have Cooking with Jay at 1 o'clock live. And on Wednesday, we'll have Gardening with Hope at 1 o'clock live and if you aren't able to watch us live you can watch any of our shows recorded on this channel uh, anytime at all so i hope you enjoyed story time today i had a lot of fun doing this with you and i hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful rest of your week i'll see you again soon bye <laughs>